there, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm happy to bring you issue number 55, Green Lantern, John Stewart, and another one of my favorite characters. I love all of the Green Lantern characters, though, to be honest with you. The whole concept of the Green Lantern really just fascinates me, and if I had to choose one, it would probably be my superpower, but this guy was made most famous on the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited animated series where he was featured as the one and only Green Lantern. Hal Jordan was only ever glimpsed in an episode extremely briefly. It was hardly even a cameo. And John was Green Lantern as far as that show was concerned. Um, that's probably where most people know this guy from. He, of course, is a former architect and U.S. Marine, but of course we'll cover all of that in his character section in the magazine, which we'll take a look at first, covering everything we need to know about Mr. John Stewart here, and then we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. This really is another fantastic figure when you look at it in detail. There are lots of nice little things that I am going to point out, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy issue number 55 of the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss. Green Lantern, John Stewart. First up, the character section. And it's here that we're first introduced to John Stewart, who was a former U.S. Marine who had trained to be an architect, but was unfortunately unemployed when he was first approached by Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. continued to be skeptical of John until John successfully thwarted an assassination attempt on a senator's life. John found life as a Green Lantern, though, was far more difficult than he had anticipated and started having problems almost from the start. After one too many near misses, the Guardians of the Universe decided John still needed some training and partnered him up with the new defender of Korrigar, the Green Lantern known as Katmatui. The next couple of pages find Jon Stewart regaining his powers as a Green Lantern not too long after losing them during the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Jon Stewart is brought back into the Green Lantern Corps when the evil new god Darkseid is threatening the universe in an attempt to find the anti-life equation. After failing to stop the bomb that resulted in the destruction of the planet Zanshi, which killed millions of people, Jon Stewart became extremely withdrawn and depressed, and for a time, even contemplated suicide. Long after this, we find a still depressed John captured by a fallen guardian of the universe named Opsa, who uses John's architectural know how and Green Lantern powers to uproot whole cities and pieces of other planets to form a new world he dubs Mosaic World. A 
powerless Jon Stewart went on to join up with the Dark Stars, an intergalactic peacekeeping force, but was soon crippled in a battle with a villain known as Graven. Hal Jordan would eventually be returned to life and would rejoin both Jon Stewart and Guy Gardner on Oa to help defend against the evil Anti-Monitor and the Sinestro Corps. We also learn that Jon is finally able to forgive himself for the destruction of the planet Zanshi after the last survivor of the planet, a woman named Fatality, who is now a star sapphire, forgives him. Finally, we learn that John was the first to encounter the Black Lanterns when he found an undead planet Zanshi floating in space. Next, we look at a couple of John's classic stories. First up, Green Lantern, Mosaic. And this beautifully illustrated story finds John Stewart basically given godlike powers when he is put in charge of a planet known as Mosaic World. And Mosaic World is made up of bits and pieces of multiple planets from across the galaxy. And he needs to use his architectural knowledge and Green Lantern abilities to overcome race wars, to help control populations. And he is faced with all of the temptations and responsibilities that a godlike creature would have to deal with. It also gave John the chance to redeem himself after the destruction of the planet Zanshi, and ultimately he's rewarded by becoming the very first mortal guardian of the universe. We also have, once again, Green Lantern, the Sinestro Corps War. And while the story doesn't focus on Jon Stewart, it does feature him, and he is one of the key players in the Sinestro Corps War. We find him using his powers and abilities as a Green Lantern and a former U.S. Marine to create a sniper rifle out of his willpower to shoot Sinestro Corps agents who are light years away. He also stands toe-to-toe -to -toe against the evil being known as Parallax, fending him off until both Kyle Rayner and Hal Jordan can come to help. It's a really fantastic story that shows he truly is one of the strongest Green Lanterns in the core. John's Friends and Foes section feature fellow Green Lanterns Hal Jordan, Kat Matui, and Kyle Rayner. And finally, the original thinking section continues the DC timeline with part 46, Paths to Glory. We first learn in 1202 AD of a charismatic warlord who calls himself Brother Blood and claims to have a cloak that was worn by Jesus Christ himself, who seizes the nation of Zandia during the Crusades. A few years later, around 1221 AD, we're introduced to an audacious lord who is seizing land illegally during the Crusades, whose life was ended shortly after this by the wandering immortal Jason Blood, the host for the demon known as Etrigan. Here we have Green Lantern, John Stewart, and I really, really love this figure. Yet another fantastic Green Lantern character. Again, superior to the first Green Lantern, Hal Jordan figure in the series, in my opinion. Uh, really dig everything about this guy. Love the fact that he's maskless. Love the fact that they made his eyes green. Um, dig the fact they gave him hair and they uh, left out the goatee. I was never really crazy about that look. Uh, for this particular character, and it's just a great 
I mean, a blending of costumes as well. I think this is probably his most recent version of the costume, but it's one of my favorites. I dig it. It's it's just subtle. There's just a little bit of green around his collar there and on the cuffs of the costume and on his boots. One of my favorite things about this guy, besides the fact that he also has a lantern like Hal and you can see it glowing from the inside, he also is hovering. I love that. And there's this like green energy at the base of his feet. I love how the toes are so pointed. Really fantastic, unique pose and a great way to show off the power that he has. It's really cool. Love the fact that you can sort of see the ring on his finger. And it's just a really, really nicely detailed all the way around. The shading, the musculature, the paint is nice. Uh, and the head sculpt is outstanding, I think. Yeah, I, I really dig this figure a lot. If you're a Green Lantern fan, I think he's worth picking up. And I'll talk about him a little more here in just a moment. John hovers above the classic DC logo, and the underside of the base features his name along with serial number. And for a sense of size and scale, here he is next to the Sinestro Corps members Sinestro and Anti-Monitor. A shot with fellow Green Lanterns Guy Gardner and Hal Jordan. And a big group shot with the other Justice League of America figures they've made so far. So John here is a wonderful figure, a great addition to the line. I love all the different Green Lanterns, how there's such a variety of them, how they all sort of come from different backgrounds, different walks of life, and how they're all sort of unique uh, in their own special sort of way. And the statues here too are each unique and extremely individual. And uh, I guess we should go ahead and start with the good. I really love pretty much everything about this guy. I love the paint job, I love his skin tone, I love the uniform they chose to give him. This is my favorite of John's uniforms, the maskless one, and there's very little green on it. It's mostly the black. I love that it's gloveless. Love his logo on the center. It's really, really nice. The green also works really well on this one. This one does have that metallic fleck, but it's not as heavy as the one that they used on Hal Jordan. I think it's a lighter green as well. Uh, all the musculature is really great. The head sculpt on this one is fantastic. It looks perfect. It looks just like John. Love the hair. Love how his eyes are that nice glowing neon green. It's really, really fantastic. Also, his lantern is great. It's similar but different to Hal Jordan's. It also has a nice glow on the inside, which was something that was missing from Sinestro's. Um, it's not quite the same as Hal's, but at least it's there, which I really, really dig. It almost looks like a swirling kind of light inside of it. Also, a really cool detail on the uh, lantern, aside from the fact that it glows on both sides, not just the one, is on the top of it, it has a Green Lantern logo sculpted into it, which is great. That's unique to this one, and it's something you really don't notice unless you're looking at this thing up close and personal. Finally, I really love the fact that he's floating. It's a great touch to the figure. It shows off his powers as a Green Lantern, and it's a nice paint job on that green glowing aura. It's got some really nice swirls of some yellows and some lime greens, and it looks like the energy that they give off. It's a really great touch. The bad. Here's where I get a little nitpicky because I really like almost everything about this guy. But the ring is a big fail for me. It's just a little disc on his finger with a dab of green paint. There's nothing to it. No sculpt, no mold, no nothing. Which is unfortunate, especially when you go back and look at Guy Gardner's and how amazing his was. So that's a fail. Also, the logo on his chest, while it is perfect and accurate and looks just as John's should, it is a decal, which also stinks. I wish it was stenciled on. So far, Howl's is the only logo to be painted. He's the only Green Lantern out of all of them to have a painted logo. So, John loses points for that. The ugly, the weakest point on the figure, without a doubt, is the lantern that he's holding in his left hand. You gotta watch out for that. If he falls, it's probably gonna snap right out of his hand, because it is just a thin piece of lead wire that they use for the handle. Also, the base, uh, where the glowing green aura connects to the actual DC base, that's kind of weak. You don't want to pick it up and swing it around. But overall, pretty solid guy, and I really, really love this figure. I love this character. I love all of the Green Lanterns, to be honest with you. Highly recommend picking him up if you're a fan. He looks great with the Justice League, and it's really cool to have all four of the first four Green Lanterns. We have them now, all in a happy little row, which is fantastic, I think. So if you're a fan of the Green Lantern characters, John here is a welcome addition. I'm still surprised they didn't do him before they did Guy, since he 
technically came before Guy, sorta, kinda, anyway. Uh, but it's really nice to finally have him. Definitely pick him up if you're a fan. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please stay tuned for a quick teaser trailer of the next figure in the line, issue number 56. We're going outside of the ballpark with this one here. We're, we're going outside the comfort zone. This is another one that probably most people have no idea who he is. He's a new god. He's a hero. And he's very, very colorful, and it's a really dynamic figure, a welcome addition to the line, because I like the obscure ones, what can I say? Anyway, thank you again for tuning in. As always, I am your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. J to his friends. Thanks for watching.